Okay. Okay. Sue Asbury, uh, Tuesday, Hello. March 9th, our, uh, our, I don't know, our third, fourth art chat uh, for the 2022 spring semester at St. Louis Catholic High School, Lake Charles, Louisiana, going out to England. Hiya. Hiya. All right. All right. Are we all in there? How yeah. many of you are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. Ten. Well, the twins. Well, let's scoop back. We got we got a set of twins that need to be involved. <laughs> and did you all do the project? Have you all finished the project? Oh my god, I need to see these. <laughs> let me let me expand. There we go. Yes. We, so uh, get in a line and bring it up and show off. Oh, excellent. You're going to come to me. <laughs> Who's the one who's done the Muppets? I want to see that one. Great. <laughs> nice. Very cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, brilliant, REM. I said that's an easy one. <laughs> that's an easy one. It's very good. Uh, who's that? It was Prince. He did like he Prince. Did oh, nice! That was a difficult one. I can't see that one very clearly. Is that the Muppets? Yes, it's the Muppets. <laughs> um, you're gonna have to tell me who that one is. <laughs> it's the Cure. Oh, wicked! The Cure. Nice one. Yeah. Mud honey. Very cool. What does that say on there? Um, piece of cake. That's just the name of their album. Oh, is it? I'm not. I don't know that one. They're quite cool, though, aren't they? Modern. This is Madonna. Madonna. Yeah. Was that 1992? Oh, yes, cool. it was. It was. <laughs> it was. Erotica was in 1992. Thank you. I did the same thing. No, it actually no, it was. I was going to do Erotica, but I decided to get ACDC. Nice one. Really cool. And that one. It's hard to see. I can't yeah. see that. Oh, Brian Eno. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Is that an instrumental one or has that got... Yeah, it's an yeah. ambient album. Yeah. It's, it's a what? Instrumental. Ambient. Nice. Yeah. Really cool. And then that Def Leppard. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, wicked. Holy smoke. Who's it's, uh, that? It's Peter Murphy. Oh, I don't know it. That's awesome. That's really beautiful. <gasps> well done. Did you find it really difficult? No, it was so fun. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. I was going to give you a tip, but I never got round to it. You know when you're doing the um, the pencil drawing? Although yours look a little bit bigger than mine, because this is like... My yeah, we, we ended yeah. up square. Uh, I, ours you are... can't see that tall, can you? Sorry. Yeah, you went slightly bigger, but I'll let yeah. you off. But um, I use um, a technical pencil because otherwise it's just you can't get the detail in. It's really hard to do it with just a regular pencil. <laughs> um, yeah, and I learned that the hard way. Yeah, the hard way, yes. Yeah. But fair play to you. That, they're really good. So only one person did a portrait, and that was Robbie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we had a, almost a portrait on the uh, on uh, Madonna. You know, but just the. Oh picture. yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. And then I guess I mean I guess it depends, you know, about. Uh, Doctor Dre, yeah. Doctor Dre, but yeah, yeah. Did you like that album? Love the album. Yeah, I, thought... yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that's what they did. You choose the album based on what you like to listen to, or did you? No, mine was not my music. Oh, yeah, you didn't even know. You just like the album like the cover. Colors. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I just kind of went into it. I knew my mom liked them. That's what I did too. You knew your well, mom. She, liked said... Them. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I knew my mom liked them. <laughs> So could you go through your parents' CD collection, see what you could find, or was it, yeah? 
I mean, I think choosing an album is, is part of the thing, isn't it? Because it's like, I've not always gone with stuff that I like necessarily. Sometimes it's just a really compelling album cover and you think, oh, that'd be really interesting to draw. And then sometimes it's just more that the music is kind of <coughs> engaging or interesting or, you know, whatever, that you feel like I should really listen to that. And so like Brian Eno, I don't know that album, but I, I, I feel like I should probably listen to that one as well. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts of, the process begins with like, which albums do you choose? Cause you can't do them all, there's so many. Um, so did you have one in your uh, processes that stands out that you didn't listen to? I know there's, I'm sure there's plenty that you didn't listen to and you still don't listen to, but where there's some that you listened to and you thought, oh, that's gonna enter my routine. Oh yeah, all the time. I think when I'm choosing my, my records, I don't, I don't know all of them. Yeah. So I'm doing like the research before I select the paint the albums that I'm going to draw, and that's that's kind of exciting, you know, discovering all this new stuff that I didn't know. Um. So yeah, I kind of, and I'm getting a bit more kind of thorough as the years go on. So I'm, I'm tending to draw more of the albums. I think it's about twenty albums a year I'm doing now, mm -hmm. whereas I was more like five or six to begin with. Um. But yeah, choosing the albums is good fun. And it's interesting that I don't think I'm doing any of your albums. I think all the ones I've chosen for 1992 are different to yours. I nearly did R.E.M., but I feel like I've heard that so much, I can't listen to it anymore. <laughs> it's such a, yeah, that was the biggest album of the year, wasn't it, I think? And then you you just did one that I was gonna draw. What, what was your, what, what, what did you just recently post? Which one? Um, I've just done Pavement. No, it wasn't. Was it that one? Suzanne oh, Vega. Yeah, you were going to do that, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, refer, I, I didn't because you did it. But yes, it was on my list. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Oh, the lighting's so bad in here. You can't see these, can you? Oh, oh there, there you go. Yeah, there yeah, there's yeah. Suzanne Vega. Yeah. Um, I've just done this today, actually. This is uh, Jonathan uh, Richmond, who's in The Modern Lovers. And then. This is um, this is one of my favourite album of the year, I think. Which is spiritualized. Uh huh. Yeah, that's uh -huh. a really good one. Uh -huh. So, yeah, and then doing the the other page is quite fun, isn't it? If you're listening to the music and you try and use that as inspiration for your piece. Actually, yeah, which one's a nice project to do? I think. Which one was more fun for you? Was it the album cover or the free form? Undisputably. I like the album cover. <laughs> Undisputably the free form. All right. Well, they're two totally different disciplines, aren't they? Which is the fun thing about it. One's, you know, you're using a different part of your creativity, aren't you? I think with the drawing, it's just straight up drawing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can talk a little bit about yeah, I was going to say that might be a good segue for you talking about a completely different part of your creativity, uh, because when we last spoke, you said you were preparing for an exhibition where you were having to do figurative work, which would have been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was saying to Robbie, we had a little chat yesterday that um, my practice is in completely all over the place. I do drawings in the sketchbooks. And then I've got the free form pieces that I do alongside that, which tend to be quite sort of, um, often they're quite last minute because I just want to get the, the thing up on Instagram and move on and do get on with the rest of my day. So often those free forms are done like in about 10 minutes and it's just whatever's lying about, you know, whatever paint I've got or scraps of paper. Um, so there's a, that's an interesting, um, challenge in a way because I can't I can't leave it empty and it's like oh I, you know and I don't want it to look bad so it, it's um it's always a relief when they come out quickly but it's it's a kind of thing where you put down a mark and then it's right you know you have to respond to that mark that you've just made and you don't know what it's going to be until it's sort of resolved so I never set out to do those free forms knowing what I'm going to paint it's always just what comes out and it surprises me you know as much as anything um, but I found that the, the process of doing that and the discipline of doing these drawings and the free forms 
does feed into my more sort of serious art practice where you know I do paintings um, so at the abstracts I'm developing those skills on how to compose and how to you know um, make a piece that's got sort of energy and has got enough um, I mean I tend to work in in contrasts so it's often like if I've got um, a dark painting I'll try and add pockets of light in there if it's textured I'll try and have a smooth surfaced bit um, always working in opposition so it's that kind of creating something that's engaging it's got balance and um, you know the, there'll be straight lines and, and um, broken up lines and anyway it's you know whatever I guess I could show you this is one that I've just been working on recently you can't really see these but you know there's I don't know what that's going to be I and mean, I don't know if it's finished yet but it just it's it's bizarre how it sort of paints itself in a way um but you can see there's like the saturated color and then there's the sort of dark gloomy patches here and then the little sort of pattern areas as well so it's not you know there's this the sections that are drawing your eye and your eyes hopefully moving all around the canvas that's the idea um so those i do a lot of abstract stuff and i tend to i enjoy doing the abstract because it feels like i'm using like pure creative energy into it you know you're using that side of your brain where it's just it's proper play and you can really like you know put the music on and get properly lost in it you know your time will just sort of disappear you've no concept no concept of how long you've been at it um whereas the other sort of painting that i do which is um figurative is just um hard work it's really hard because <laughs> you have to be very disciplined you have to know you know which color to lay down and where and um if you make a mistake it can sort of ruin the painting although it can be sort of fixed but it's um yeah it's rewarding in the end because you know you've got a good piece but yeah quite often i can spend days on a painting and it's not progressing it's not moving forward because i'm not accomplished enough to make it work and you know you have to trash it and it's just heartbreaking so miserable and you feel so fed up with yourself and um you just wish that you were a uh, i don't know an accountant or something you had a, a job that didn't have any creativity in it but um yeah so these are some of my figurative pieces and this is the exhibition that i've got coming up in um in june you can't see it can you it looks all a bit bleached out but um I've got to do, um, I think it's something like 25 pieces for a solo show. Um, and I'll show you a few more. Hang on. These are, uh, sorry, just bear with me. So the challenge is just finding something to paint. That's, that's the first challenge so i've been um doing some sort of portraits but not of my face just hands um you can see still lives as well so these are and i'm quite i quite like um sunlight you know in the morning or in the evening when it kind of has a, a warmth to it and it's got like a yeah a nice you get strong shadows and interesting lighting effects i don't like sort of overcast you know bright light in the midday and then this is me in a pub toilet <laughs> the so that's kind of got that sort of um music thing going on you know with all the stickers and stuff from the bar you know so that's what i'm working on now and um and are they yeah, all? As I say, it's it's finding the, the subject matter, which means taking an interesting photograph, and that's the first. So I feel like I'm a photographer first, and then only then do I get to do the painting, and hopefully that will come out and be interesting and look good. You 
you have a do you have a title for the exhibition yet? Um, no, no. Okay. I might do. I mean, I've I had a solo show um back in September and it was just my name, but yeah, it would be nice. And I feel like um there will be something that unifies the paintings. Yeah. But at the minute, I don't know what that is, but it's probably um. I mean, essentially, the thing that unifies my paintings at the moment is just they are my observations and they're very much, it's humdrum, it's just, you know, a piece of toast on a plate. Um, it's just me going about my life and things that catch my eye, you know, I'm constantly looking out for things. So it's kind of like, it's a bit biographical, I suppose, you know. Uh -huh. But then maybe every artist is, isn't it? It's just, you know, it's what you do, it's what interests you, what, what catches your eye. Well, I kind of like what you just said as far as, uh, you know, it, it, leak, it blending in some of the music, and we know about the music, so Humdrum, Humdrum's a pretty darn good title right there. Totally, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's it. I'll write that down. Yeah, yeah. Humdrum, yeah. I often use that word as well, yeah. Yeah. Mundane, humdrum. It's not the most engaging, <laughs> is it? But it does seem to capture something about what I do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what what I, I am, I, I'm looking behind you. I see over your right shoulder, probably the source of the dots. And over your left shoulder, the dots. Is that a calendar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah the dots yeah yeah that's a calendar so those are all just um yeah that's just my life <laughs> plotted out over there <laughs> so i've got a couple of exhibitions coming up but the, the main one is the solo show in june okay yeah okay. um and i suppose you know I, I was you've all listened to that podcast that i did haven't you which yeah which is that reaction you gave me yesterday what 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 is it about the podcast that you were like that you fret that we uh, listen to it? Well, I don't like talking about myself, so oh, I well, find it a bit you. cringy. Thank you, thank you for saying yes to this art chat. Then. Yeah, I know, I know, it's not me really, but um, so you know a bit about my sort of backstory, then, don't you already? But um, I was gonna say I'm not sure I expressed it that well on the podcast how. I don't know about you guys and if you're all, you know, if you know what you want to be and where you're up to and I don't, I believe none of you are necessarily going to be taking art any further than this course, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Or take other art classes. Okay, we've got it. Yeah, yeah, we've got a few. Yeah, because what was kind of interesting for me, and I don't know how unique this is, but, you know, I was 30 before I even knew I could, I didn't think I could draw or paint. I honestly, um, in fact, I definitely couldn't. I definitely couldn't. Um, and I got like, um, a, I remember getting a watercolor set for my 30th birthday and being absolutely mortified because I just did not know how to use it. I, I couldn't, couldn't paint at all. And, um, it just sort of, um, you know, it was about another 10 years, maybe when I was 40, when I kind of figured out that I could draw. Well, did, so you really it. It. did you buy it? Did you buy it for yourself? Weird. I don't know. Huh? Did you buy it for yourself or was it a gift? It was a gift. Yeah. He was trying to mm, get me to take up some creative path. But I mean, I, was, I always enjoyed photographing stuff because I think that was a little bit, you know, less um, in, um, oh, I don't know, what's the word? You know, you don't feel as much pressure with a photograph and every, anyone can use a camera. Right. So I enjoyed that, but I think I was really intimidated. Right, the right. Word, I was really intimidated by drawing and painting because at some point I just decided I couldn't do it. And that was that. And um, I think gradually, you know, as it turns about 40, it, it started to sort of, um, it dawned on me that, oh, actually, I can do this. And the painting would probably only really kicked in about four years ago. So it's just weird. I feel like, you know, most people have it in them. It's just a matter of um, practice, I think. 
maybe or maybe not but yeah I don't know what I'm saying really but maybe it's just that you just don't know it's like I, I could never have predicted this would happen to me it's it is odd but what okay so you were 40 you started playing and then but what what there had to be something that did you like what you were uh, creating like what was what was the drive what decided what what gave you the decision to keep moving forward with it? um so i was interested i mean i was always making so i did have that creative urge and there's a there's definitely a thing that i i enjoy being creative yeah um and it was a a, a friend of mine i said that i'd quite fancy to do some painting she recommended a, a class that i could go to and it's just an adult class um like a community center thing full of like old age pensioners you know really kind of not not like a trendy thing at all um and yeah, I just went to that every week and progressed and got better and better at it and thought, oh, okay, you know, yeah. And it was a hobby for about three years and I only actually took it up professionally maybe last year. So, um, yeah, but I think you just, it's that thing, isn't it? The more you do it, um, the better you get. I think it's probably just as simple as that. And because it's, it is now what I do, you know, it's, it's, it's gone up a level and it's, I take it more seriously and I'm, I'm at it. Like I'm, I'm painting most days. So, um, yeah, but I do feel a little bit like I'm, I'm self-taught as well. You know, I've not, I mean, I've been to, I did do a year at college at art college, but weirdly I did a year at art college and didn't really pick up a paintbrush. <laughs> I must have been just messing about. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I got away with it, but yeah. So that's interesting, I think. I got somebody pulling up a question. Um, would you say that art is especially therapeutic for you? He said, would you say that art is therapeutic for you? Yeah. Yeah. Did I say that in the podcast? Yes. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. You know, if ever you feel you're... like you're just done in and your head's messed up and that, and it's just the best thing. And especially if you find something that sort of, um, is you can lose yourself in. So the figurative paintings not necessarily like that because you do have to sort of think and if you're not in the right space it they can get they can feel like you know it's difficult to do but yeah the the drawing and the abstract painting are just yeah they're brilliant for that it's like a form of um mindfulness isn't it you know you get into the um into the zone what do they call it flow you know you get into a state of flow um and yeah, you, you, I think your heart beat slows down and everything's just, you know, everything's cool. So it's definitely therapeutic. Yeah. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah. on to that. So if, um, so like the period, so if art, you first uh, started off as like uh, something therapeutic, how um how is like the period where you transition from it just being this therapy into like your your job how how is that like how did you transition from it just being like this nice thing that you do to something you make a living off right um well it's quite a fluid transition i think because i was um fortunate in the sense that i didn't really go out to work for i've not been you know I, i've been uh, at home mother um so i've not had to go out and earn a living um which is extremely lucky isn't it you know and um so it kind of transitioned from a hobby into a, a profession just sort of organically um and yeah there are days where i might not be working as hard as i could be <laughs> So yeah, because you can't, I don't know, you can't put too much pressure on it either. You know, if you, if you feel like you've just got the work, 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 you can get a bit 
um, impact on it, I think, as well. You have to feel like you, you want to paint a little bit. Although, saying that, I do, I do come in here every day and make sure I do something. And that's where the album sketches comes in really handy, because if you don't feel like you're in the space to paint, you can always... You can always do an album sketch, you know. Yeah. Have you ever yeah, I'm dead lucky and I've got this garden studio and um yeah, I can come in here and put music on and chill out. It's great. Yeah. Actually the light is fading in here, so I hope it's okay. It's just it's turning into night time now. <laughs> yes, it's still good. What city are you actually in? So I'm in Macclesfield, which is next to Manchester, um, and that is the northwest. We're near, um, I'm right on the edge of the Peak District, so it's very beautiful. I'm sort of semi-rural, really. Um, it's like a half-hour walk, and I'm up in the hills, and it's just, you know, views of hills and, and open space. But heading the other direction, and there's, um, yeah, it's a town. I and mean, we can get into London really quickly. But Macclesfield is famous for... A certain band from the 80s um, called Joy Division. Oh. And loads, they've got like, yeah, they're, they're, they've, um, they're quite um, a cult band, you know, lots of fans all around the world come and visit Macos, <laughs> which is not like a, a particularly exciting place to visit. But um, yeah, Ian Curtis, the singer's from Macclesfield. Mm -hmm. He's, he, He's dead now, but um, yeah. Well, don't don't forget about the only silk museum in the UK. Oh yeah, and that's well, yeah, at the Silk Road. Yeah, yeah, the Silk Trail from <laughs> Macclesfield. Yeah, yeah, I looked. I said, "What is Macclesfield known for? Silk industry." And then we yeah, got yeah. Ian Curtis. And we've got like industrial heritage as well. Lots of mills and cotton mills around, and the canals right. and stuff. So, yeah, it's a nice place. Yeah. Yeah. I used to live in London for a while, lived there for about 15 years. But yeah, you just, you burn out over there. To, you have had enough of it. And I think with having a kid, you know, it's much nicer up here, better quality of life. Yeah. What? Tired of living in the city. Tired of living there? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, I do miss it. I think, yeah, yeah I feel like. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but maybe you're too young, but about you, Robbie, but you're in a city, you know, you live in a city and you get you burn out and then you want to move into the countryside and then you kind of crave the city life again. <laughs> you can't have both. Yeah. It's not fair. I was listening to, uh, but, but that's an interesting, like, problem to have, I guess. Uh, I was listening to this podcast, I don't know, a, a few months ago. It was on, uh, it was on the Cocteau Twins. Okay. And which is a, a band and, and one of the, one of the reviews in a magazine called NME, uh, when they first started said, you know, gave, gave Elizabeth Frazier the moniker of the voice of God. Okay. But, but, and they make this very beautiful music, but I didn't realize that they came from this incredibly dank and dark industrial town in Scotland. Um, and, yeah. And, and we, I, I told you yesterday that we had suffered a couple of hurricanes, you know, a couple of years ago. And I mean, you still drive around this city and there's destruction everywhere. And I get so angry. I find myself getting so angry and I'm blaming it on the frustration of this visual clutter and well, which now I feel silly for because of, of Ukraine, yeah, yeah. but, 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 but I thought, you know what, if the Cocteau twins can come from darkness and then make this beautiful, like you, you, you recognize and you can react one way or the other, you can react, uh, yeah. to, to oh, change. No, Glasgow is not all bad. It's, but I didn't think know, it, there are nice parts of Glasgow. <laughs> but that's where they're from. Lots of fans from Glasgow. I didn't yeah. think Glasgow. Oh, is it not? She was from Glasgow. Well, yeah. that's the well, whatever, in Scotland. Whatever and, podcast I was listening to, it said that it wasn't. Edinburgh? I no, it was a place I'd never heard of. But maybe that's where they grew. That's where they went to. It doesn't. 
The point was... That doesn't matter. No, no, no. The point yeah, is yeah. that you're saying that you can... Yeah. Darkness and that, yeah. Joy Division, however, is the darkest music, you know, and yeah. it's a dark place. So they, they've married the two up. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. yesterday, a couple of days ago, I was talking to a therapist friend of mine. I didn't realize, maybe you, some of you knew this. I didn't know this. When you were talking about making it a point to go into your studio, but maybe you don't spend as much time in there as you, as you should be it being, or, or whatever, at being a full-time job. I didn't realize that therapists, at least here in Louisiana, uh, they can't, they're not supposed to see patients more than 25 hours a week because you, because you'll burn out. Yeah. 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 Which I thought was fantastic. You're still doing your work, but you're just giving your brain a rest yeah. in a different capacity to yeah. understand. I yeah. Can, yeah, I can well believe that. Yeah. It's a hard job, eh? I guess. I mean, I guess you base your your rates on I mean you're still working. Yeah, you're working. But you're just not seeing patients during that time. I don't I don't know. You're still working. You're just not sitting in front of somebody or listening. And therapists have to have therapists themselves, don't they? Isn't that that's in the UK, I think they have therapists themselves. Anyway, why are we talking about how do we get onto that? Do you have any more questions? Yeah, I have a question about your um like your city and rural like life as I was I was wondering um what's well, how would you say living in the city and living in a more rural environment impacted your life as an artist and your work? Okay. Well, living in a city is really cool when you're creative, I think, because you just, there's so much stimulation. You know, there's so much everywhere you look, there's visual input, isn't there? You know, um, and I think it's the kind of stimulation that I need you know I like that that, that I like the, the busyness and the bright lights and um, all the clutter and the noise the busyness um, whereas here and I found this is it's actually quite a good question because living here and during the pandemic you know the last the last in, in particularly in 2020 when we were all in lockdown um, so our lives were just contained you know within where we could walk we weren't really allowed to go out in the car go anywhere um so i was still trying to you know make art to make paintings and it's like okay so i am limited to um you know what's around me and to an extent it's like oh it's kind of boring you know it's just trees and fields and even it's beautiful but it's not um it's not inspiring to me um, so I think I found the, the way in for me was the, um, choosing the time of day kind of gave it more atmosphere. So going out at night, um, and I said, I do tend to paint quite a lot of nocturnes, you know, paintings of evening. And then you've got like street lights and that kind of casts an interesting colour. Um, and the, it, it just gives, it imbues it with more atmosphere. Um, than a normal painting of, of that scene during the day would have done. So it's kind of trying to capture some atmosphere that you would get like really easily in a city, in a rural setting, you feel like it needs, um, yeah, the time of day can, can help. And I, <laughs> I've got lots of nocturnes, I enjoy painting night scenes, but I know that the, um, the dawn is also brilliant, isn't it? You know, because you've got that gorgeous mist and the, you know, the lighting of, of sunrise is amazing. But I'm not a morning person, <laughs> so I've, I keep telling myself I must get out of bed and go out and take some, go for walks in the morning and get some, you know, inspiration. But I've been saying that for a few years now. And so maybe tomorrow. Yeah. How old is your? Do you live in a city. You are you guys in a city, or are you are you rural? Is it rural there? The fourth largest city by population. In like we have like seventy five thousand people. In the yeah. City. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah. 
Yeah, uh, we are we are close to uh, the Gulf of Mexico. We're close to um, uh, lots of waterways, and and you, it doesn't take far long to get out of the city into the rural areas. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, oh, look at you, Grangemouth, Grangemouth. That's where Cocteau twins are from. That might be a suburb of Glasgow. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm still yeah. I'm still having Glasgow. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's a very specific location. I just looked up what's the origin. How yeah. how how old is your uh, if you don't mind me asking, how old is your your son or daughter? Son? Daughter? He's, he's eleven. Eleven. Okay. Yeah. And does he yeah. spend time with mom in the studio? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Short answer to that question, no, he's not interested. That's annoying, isn't it? I've been trying to get him into it, but no, not happening. But maybe, well, maybe mean, days, as I say, I wasn't until I was that's 40, right. That's so. right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to put another light on because it's getting really dark. Okay. No, oh, that's different, isn't it? So when you were younger, you keep saying, okay, so you keep saying like, oh, I didn't know I could like do this until I was 40. So when you were younger, did you just like not have an interest in any of this? Uh, that's a good question. Um, no, I did. I did. Um, but I was a graphic designer. So that's what I used to do. And um, obviously, I think... So maybe 20, 15 years of training in graphic design definitely informed my painting um, because uh, I was mostly working in print-based um, design and working in uh, magazines and brochures and stuff. So you're working on a, a double page spread. So you have to create like, you know, where the photograph's going to go in the text and whatnot. And um, some of them are kind of, Quite sort of dynamic spreads. All of that is is honing your compositional skills um, and balance and all of that. And so yeah, I think that obviously fed into it. But yeah, I mean, I had a passing interest in art, you know. Yeah, but um, yeah, weirdly not 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 passionate about it. Um, so I'm kind of catching up now, learning, you know. And it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting learning from past masters and then also alongside that, you know, you see contemporary artists on Instagram and that and how, um, how brilliant some of them are. And it's like, oh my God, it's, it can be kind of depressing looking on Instagram sometimes. You just think, oh God, I can't do that. I can't do that. But then, you know, there's no point in comparing yourself to other people. It's just do your own thing. And there's that thing as well, you know, if you enjoy what you're doing, then that should be enough. But I think we all want some kind of um, confirmation that people like your work, don't you? You know, I can't think of the word. What's the word? Yeah. So I, I, I guess it was right when we first started uh, talking about this happening uh i did notice that that and and by your email address that uh the partnership that you have with your husband in the design firm and i saw that he was a uh also an author uh and and copyrightist and so um but you said that you are no longer doing the design stuff was there a was there a was there was it refreshing to and when you say design, I assume that that's like uh, you know digital, and was was it refreshing to to try to kind of change perspectives? Yeah, yeah. So the design was um, uh, you're working for a client. Yeah. So you're working within parameters. You've got constraints, which is kind of a a nice form of creativity isn't it you know you, you you're not just free to do whatever the hell you like you have to work within constraints um but yeah i kind of hadn't appreciated how 
graphic design is a service industry. You are basically there just to do as you're told. Um, and that can get a bit... It would get a little bit demoralising sometimes when you felt like you present... You always present the client with three, maybe two or three options. You'd never say, here's the thing, which is maybe... That was where we were going wrong. You know, we'd always say, oh, well, you can have this route or this route. And then they, they would choose. And, like... <laughs> They wouldn't always choose the best one. Right. And sometimes worse than that, they'd go, oh, well, can we have a bit of that and then a bit of that? And it would be designed by committee and you'd be like, yeah. You know, and it would be really, really annoying when you know that you bypass like the best thing that I've done in a year. You know, this is, the, I'm really proud of this thing and you just said no to it. And yeah. Um, and that would get very frustrating because I think uh in terms of a career in design as well you do need to get um recognition and you do that by entering award schemes and stuff and so you need the client to help you by choosing the best work and that you can then you know submit it for awards and stuff um but yeah so uh my husband and i we don't he's the it's a weird business because it's has been as you but it's him and I think we just called it that because I was stood next to him. Like, well, you know, yeah. and I think it makes it sound bigger and better. I don't know. Um, but we didn't really work for clients together. I was working in um, design agencies. So our business was mostly just him doing copywriting for clients. And we would do um, self-initiated projects, which I talked about on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But that's um, and I need that for a while. Go ahead. Um, do you have a favorite album that you drew? Ah, I knew someone would ask me that question. <laughs> well, I'd say the one I did today actually. Spiritualized is my favorite album from nineteen ninety two. It's it's better. That's a quick answer. I can't bear what's your favourite questions because it's like, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be um, like pigeonholed into like, that's that's what she likes. Because I like, you know, I've got quite a broad taste, I think. So. Um, why do you choose certain years? Like, why do you stay like in like 1992? Like, what makes you choose which year you're going to do? Oh, it's just chronological. So, um, in, was it March 20, 2020, with um, an album by Frank Sinatra in 1955. And I've just, that's been the starting point, and I've just gone all the way up. And I'm now it's 1992. So, yeah, yeah. a couple of weeks, it'll be 1990. Right. You I don't out. know if I'll stop at 2000 or just keep going. You cut out there for a second. Did you say in a How couple I... a couple of weeks it's going to be 93? Is that what you said? Yeah. Hopefully, okay. yeah. We'll get on to 1993. So, and I don't know about you, Robbie, but I was at university in 1992, so it's all it's all happening. Yeah, yeah. I I yeah, yeah I was happy. too. Yeah. Oh, I, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm 50. Yeah, me too. In okay. May. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, what is, is there a set number? Is it twenty? About twenty albums, fifteen albums that, and then you move on to the next. Uh, year? Yeah, something like that. Well, unless it's a really good year, and then it just yeah, it just keeps going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So do you have a favorite year that you've done? <laughs> Rephrase that question. Or what? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, I was a bit disappointed with 1992, actually. I found that a lot of the stuff that I was into, I was like, oh, I don't like that anymore. Uh, yeah. So, um, hmm. we'll see. It'd be interesting going more into the yeah current times, because there's just so much more music now, isn't there? Yes. 
And I think yeah. it's so fractured and that it's not as kind of, you know, not everybody's listening to the same things and it's not as, um, yeah, you don't get the, the big albums that you used to get. So the whole, the, the, initially the thing with the album covers was that they were just so um, memorable. I think people instantly recognise them. Um, especially albums in the 60s and 70s, you know, they're all classics. Whereas I suppose nowadays it's like, is there, do we have classic albums anymore? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's it. That, when I said that we would do this again, uh, one of the students, Brennan, who did uh, Madonna, just random, just, just kind of seemingly he just threw out, what was it, 78? Yeah, yeah he's just like, we're going to do 1978 because that's when a good music was around. Yeah, yeah. 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 To be fair, I reckon anything from 1965 through to now, you could just put all the years in a hat, couldn't you? And then just pick yeah. up. That would be really good. That would be fun. Yeah. Like a random yeah. selection. All right. Well, I think we're good, Sue. I know okay. we're good. I think we've wrapped up. We've got, um, but what may I, may I put them... May I take a picture of them with you? You're you, you're up on a you are up on a big screen here. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I uh, I'll put them on each side of you and take a photo. And maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Bring. No, you won't be able to see. Is that light better? To... What'd you say, Sue? Oh. Um, better. Can you see me better? I can see you just great. Uh, let's see. Turn. Oh, this is. I think we all have a I'm going to turn on a light here. Who's missing? Ronnie. Ronnie. Ronnie had to go to tennis. Ronnie. Here he is. <laughs> okay. And a one, and a two, and a three. That's good stuff. All righty. <gasps> Sue, so very much thanks for. Uh, well, y'all, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. Yes, and I'm going to continue doing this assignment. Uh, Brilliant. And um, good luck with the June exhibition. And I will just yeah. continue to uh, be excited about seeing what you what you put out yeah. there. Yeah. Likewise. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Thank you, Sue. I will. Bye. Yes, I'll stay in touch. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.